over a year ago, I wrote a grant for an LEF, uh, for some LEF funds to help pay for this project, which began as really um, a question to the students. What person, place, or event in Loudoun County deserved the next historical marker? And the kids were then unleashed to go research all they could on Loudoun County history and come back with one of those people, places, or events to propose. So then they were put in groups, they formed a proposal, they presented their proposals, which also had to include the text for the marker, and we had a group of celebrity judges, like Wade Byard and uh, Bill <laughs> Brazier, the social science superintendent here at Loud County Public Schools, Laura Christensen from the Thomas Falk Library, and they narrowed it down to one, and the winning proposal was the proposal for the Ashburn Color School. Then we sent the application to the Virginia Department of Historic Resources and waited and waited and waited and waited. We thought we'd never hear. We sent it, I think, it was the beginning of December is when we sent it, and we didn't hear until the middle of March that we were approved. And we had a little joyous celebration at that time, and then it took forever for this sign to appear, which didn't appear till yesterday, so I was panicking a little bit. Um, I drove by yesterday morning and it still wasn't here, and finally in the afternoon it was here. I want to thank a few people for making this all happen. First of all, the LEF, the Loudoun Education Foundation and the Claude Moore Charitable Foundation. Without their grant, none of this would have been possible, so we thank you very much. Uh, I'd also like to thank the celebrity judges, who I mentioned earlier, Wade Byard, Public Information Officer, uh, Mr. Bill Brazier, su Supervisor for Social Science and Global Studies, Laura Christensen, Curator of Manuscripts and Archives at the Thomas Falk Library, uh, and two of Farmo's teachers, Carol Wenger and Eric Sassick, who also participated in the judging. Uh, I'd also like to, she's not here I don't think, Jennifer Lowe at the Virginia Department of Historic Resources has been a tremendous help to me. She led me through the tedious process of the application, helped students quite a bit too. She also put up with my lengthy and at times many emails in panic over this sign that wasn't here. It was promised last week, so every day, three, four times a day, I was emailing her. Um, also like to thank the Loudon School for the Gifted, who allowed us to put the sign on their property, especially Sharon Nipmeyer, who has been a great help to me too. She's been my contact at the Loudon School for the Gifted. But most of all, I'd like to thank the kids who really did almost 100% of this work. Without them, this definitely would not have happened. I've been teaching for 21 years. This is the best group of kids I have ever had, hands down. Um, they've been just very excited about the project. They've seen Ooh. it through. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And I could not be more proud of them. So now it is, if I've forgotten to thank someone, sorry, my fault alone, I apologize. Um, but now let's turn it over to the kids who are the real stars of this show. First speaker today is Ben Brissett, seventh grader at Farmer Station Middle School. The site on which this marker has been erected, the Ashburn Colored School, stands as a testament to our state's and nation's segregated past. We think that the school opened in 1892, around the time when Jim Crow laws were first introduced throughout the South in, a, in an attempt to force African Americans into second class citizenship and to suppress the rights that they had been granted after the Civil War. During this time, public facilities and pub public transportation across the country were segregated segregation on trains, and ultimately segregation in general was challenged during the 1896 Plessy versus Ferguson case that eventually went to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court ruled that segregation was legal as long as the segregated facilities were separate but equal. The Ashburn Colored School is an example of how segregated schools were not, in fact, separate but equal. To further illustrate this, I'd like to share the words of former student Louise Windsor Thomas, and I quote, due to segregation, there was very limited education, limited teachers, and limited secondhand books for students in the first through eighth grade. One teacher taught each subject for at least 30 minutes. As this quote from a student of the Ashburn Colored School demonstrates, the resources and ultimately the quality of education as a whole of African American schools during the segregation era were not equal to those of the white schools. Eventually, however, during the Brown versus Board of Education Supreme Court case in 1954, where segregation in public schools was challenged on a national scale, 
the Supreme Court ruled against school segregation, and the Ashburn Colored School closed five years later as a result of the court's monumental decision. When Mr. Dodson tasked us with choosing a location in Loudoun County to honor with a roadside historical marker, we chose this location due to its correspondence to such a dark time in our history. It is important, especially in today's world, to remember the effect that bigotry has had on our society. Such an effect that my peers and I would not have been able to attend the same school simply due to the color of our skin. However, today in public schools across the country, students are now treated equally and allowed to learn alongside one another regardless of race. In fact, all of us who work together on this project are of many different races and religions, proving that our country has changed drastically 50 years later. However, it still has yet to change completely. As many of you are likely aware, this historic school was recently vandalized with racist symbols. Our community as a whole demonstrated that hate has no place in Loudoun County and raised $100,000 for the efforts to restore the vandalized school led by the Loudoun School for the Gift. The teens who vandalized the school, all of whom pleaded guilty to the charges presented against them, will be researching the meanings behind the hateful symbols they put on the school in addition to the subjugation of minorities throughout history during their one year of probation. Hopefully, they'll be able to gain a deeper understanding of why their actions are so hurtful to our community and its diverse population. The vandalism and restoration definitely played a role in our group's decision to choose this site as the topic of our historical market project. We were inspired by the preservation of this school and its legacy I wanted to further contribute to the preservation of this site by constructing a roadside historical marker on its grounds. My peers and I believe that the Ashburn Colored School will serve an important role in educating the community of our county's past as we move forwards into the future. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce my friend and fellow student, Ashley Brown. My perspective. Behind me, the Ashburn Colored School might not look like much, but to me, it is. As an African American student, it means so much that I have the opportunity to bring the school back into the light. Its past significance from 1892 to 1959 continues to have relevance and a great impact. Not only on me, but others that value education. The following speech will be regarding the topic of what it's like to be an African American in the state of America. The first time I saw the school, I asked my mother what it was. She responded by saying, it was a school that was for the African American children during the segregation era. It's such an important topic. So why has it been put in the shadows of America's history? The true story. My mom, grandmothers, as well as my great grandmother will often say in one way or another, remember the generations on whose shoulders you stand. They tell me stories of how much pain and suffering they endured, as well as the determination of my people in which they display. Just to get an education, I imagine children walk 8 to 12 miles in terrible weather conditions, rainstorms, snow, and over rugged dirt roads, and through fields, to this school to get an education, just like my ancestors. The educational facilities were not equal, nor the materials or resources. However, my people valued a chance to learn. It bothers me that the educational rights I have today were not given to the people before me. The Declaration of Independence, 1776, written 241 years ago, and I stress too, hear me now, two centuries ago, states, all men are created equal and that we are endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights, one among them, the pursuit of happiness. How can it be, how should it be, that African Americans have been and are denied the foundation of happiness. An opportunity to equal education. A man's happiness is so dependent upon his ability to have basic needs, food, shelter, met and to meet the needs of his family. 
without an adequate education, then he cannot be substantially nor adequately employed to accomplish his goal. Neither is he able to experience happiness beyond providing for the necessities, nor is he able to experience the leisure things of life, which bring pleasure, joy, delight to maintain a stable or balanced mental and emotional state, self-fulfillment, and a sense of accomplishment. We wanted and want an equal education to work, to excel. We are not a lazy people. We aspire to have good paying jobs, to work not only with our hands, but to lead with our mind and intellect. Like many others, we want to make the most of every opportunity. We are capable of using it wisely to be a blessing to our families, our community, this country, as well as the world. Bashman Color School is a reminder of how far we have come as a community, but as a civilized, democratic society, have we really come far enough? The vandalism of it sh continues to show us how far we have to go. This is not an end. This is not the end, but again, a start. An even greater start would to be include more African American history in the curriculum of US history in our public schools. We, as African Americans, have made a tremendous and very contribution to the building and growth of America as a nation. We are taught about the Ameri African American experience, slavery, segregation, but our history is not as emphasized and naturally included as it should be. Very little information is taught in our schools. In my perspective, it shows that no matter the challenges we face, we rise. Not only will we rise as African Americans rise, but we as a nation will rise. In the words of Maya Angelou, an excerpt from her poem, Still I Rise, leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. On the shoulders of my ancestors, I rise. As an educated people, we rise. Thank you. Oh, wow. And now let me introduce the Chairman of the Board of Directors for the Virginia Department of Historic Resources, Clyde Smith. Oh, wow. I want to tell you, if you ever have to speak in public, don't let those two people speak. <laughs> Okay. Really a bad play. <laughs> they say actors should never act with children or with animals. Uh, next time, I've got to be first on the. Uh, yeah. the, the uh, thank you so much for having me here today. Uh, and thank you for pointing out that uh, it took so long, <clears throat> excuse me, to get this all approved. <clears throat> excuse me. Okay. Well. I'm not going to talk to you people. I really don't care a lot about you, but I'm going to talk to you because I care tremendously about you. The, um, you, you were so eloquent in your remarks. It's wonderful. Are any people here today that uh, went to the school or had uh, ancestors that went to the school? Nobody? That's oh, interesting. Because it closed. Friends. What year did it close? Friends. Friends. Yeah, whoa. protecting historic, all sorts of historic things, like Mount Vernon, and like this school. And on Monday, I'll be uh, with the governor dedicating a marker, uh, just like this one with different words on it, for the Supreme Court uh, ruling that came down, <coughs> excuse me, 50 years ago, Monday, was the ruling on Loving. You know the Loving case? You all know when you studied about that? Yeah used to be that that people of various races could not marry. And that was very common. There were laws all over the United States that did that. But in, uh, in Virginia, until 50 years ago, that's how things were. And there was a case from people from Bowling Green, Virginia, that went to the Supreme Court and overthrew them. The, you need to listen to 
your your mother and your grandmother when they talk to you <coughs> about how things used to be. Used to be horrible. Now, much better. Perfect? Not yet. But we're moving. We're moving in the right direction. And in some bizarre way, I want to thank the four guys that came here and messed up this building because it made us focus a little bit uh, on on this whole racism kind of issue. And it's interesting how it brought the community together, isn't it? And they they raised the money and they fixed it all up. And they're saying it's we're not we're not going to behave that way. I was going to use kind of a bad word, but I probably shouldn't do that since I'm talking to you guys. But it's, it's it was inappropriate and. I think it's being dealt with in a, in a really positive, professional way. We thank you for that. The uh, program, the marker program, started in the 1920s. A guy from the Commonwealth of Virginia was up in Michigan and he saw some signs driving down the highway that were Burmashave signs. Anybody here know what a Burmashave sign is? Oh, just a couple of people, and, and their hair's a little gray. But it was a way of advertising shaving cream, and they were little poems. You went down the road and you read these poems. And so he came back and he said, what a great idea to sort of let people know what's available in the Commonwealth of Virginia. We were the first state to have a marker program. We now have 2,500 markers, and I'm going to read the list of those to you. <laughs> you don't want me to. No, we, we won't do that. But this is the newest one, and uh, it was paid for by money that you guys raised. That's, that's right? LEF grant. Oh, a grant. What? You mentioned Claude Moore. Claude Moore has done a whole lot for Loudoun County. You ought to do a segment on Claude Moore if you have never done that. Unbelievable man. Anyway, the, um, I'm just delighted to be here, and I think it's time now to um, pull this marker cover off, and let's take a look at the marker. How's that? Okay. Do you mind with your final closing comments there? Great. We'd like to thank everyone, all of you, for coming today. In just a few minutes, we will reveal the marker for the Ashburn Colored Schoolhouse. After the reveal, we'd like to invite everyone into the schoolhouse to take a look. Uh, to take a look around. We have also created a few displays to show you the process that we went through to make this marker happen. My peers and I will be on hand to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. You've made a tangible difference through your work this year, and it just illustrates why it's important that you keep doing what you've been doing, working so hard, because you will continue to make meaningful contributions to the world. And uh, Mr. Dotson, I want to commend you as well, because as amazing as these students are, I know you know from this experience that when you give students in the future the opportunity to make a meaningful contribution while they're learning, that their learning will be deeper and longer lasting. So not only are the students an inspiration today, but you're an inspiration for the type of um, type of work that we need to be doing in this school system in terms of engaging students and solving authentic, challenging problems. So today really is a wonderful day, and I commend you all for your work. Well done. <laughs> 